Hello everyone! Uh, watching a chess tournament broadcast live is highly enjoyable, but what makes the experience even more enjoyable is good chess commentary. And when it comes to chess commentary, well, uh, Yasser is definitely <laughs> the chess commentary god. And uh, this game was played in, in 1982, and uh, that's well before Yasser was a famous commentator. And uh, <laughs> this, this was the time uh, where, when Yasser crushed world champions. As this game, Yasser is playing with the white pieces against the current world chess champion Anatoly Karpov himself. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful game and a very interesting game, but even more interesting to me uh, is the reason why Karpov lost this game. And uh, Karpov himself uh, said so. Uh, but I will let you know <laughs> the reason after the game. So, like I said, Yasser is white and he plays a knight f3. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now c4, an English opening. Uh, we have e6. And knight to c3, d5, we have d4 by Yasser, now transposing into the queen's gambit declined, we have bishop to e7, bishop to g5, h6, bishop to h4, uh, carp of castles, and rook to c1. Uh, we have b6, uh, preparing to develop that light square bishop, and uh, here Yasser goes for a series of exchanges. He plays c captures on d5, we have knight captures on d5 by Karpov, knight captures on d5, uh, e captures on d5, and now bishop captures on e7, queen captures on e7, and g3. Uh, Yasser is also preparing to develop with bishop to g2. We have rook to e8, now of course uh, kind of harassing this e2 pawn if bishop to g2 is played, so we have rook to c3 by Yasser. Uh, preparing either queen to c2 or queen to c1, or maybe even rook to e3 if the position allows it. Uh, Karpov plays a uh, knight to a6, and here uh, Yasser immediately plays a uh, queen to a4. Now, uh, not, not allowing uh, black to play to develop the, the bishop uh, on the king side, uh, well, he could play bishop to b7 or something like that, uh, but Karpov actually goes c5 and uh, allows, uh, allows Yasser, uh, well, uh, allows Yasser a great move, uh, which Karpov actually allowed. Uh, this wasn't a blunder. Uh, Yasser plays uh, rook to e3. And now, as you can see, he's attacking uh, Karpov's queen, and if the queen moves, then both uh, Yasser's queen and the rook are threatening to capture here on e8, and, uh, well, this would be losing if the queen moves. So, Yasser played, a b uh, Karpov played bishop to e6, uh, but now Yasser can capture this pawn freely, uh, this knight on a a6 freely. He plays uh, queen captures on a6, and we have c captures on d4. And, uh, well, uh, the rook is attacked and this pawn cannot be captured. If knight captures on d4, then queen to b4 with check picks up this knight and uh, black is better here. So after c captures on d4, uh, Yasser plays rook to b3. Now defending against this queen to b4 check and also it's, well, the rook is fine here. And uh, Karpov plays a bishop to f5. Uh, we have bishop to g2, uh, developing and preparing the castle, and now bishop to c2. If uh, Karpo was an attacking player, he might have tried uh, d3 here, you know, going for a full attack, but after e3 there's really nothing black can hope for here. Uh, so after bishop to g2, Karpo played uh, bishop to c2, now attacking this rook. <clears throat> and it's, uh, well, if uh, Karpo would try to defend this rook with a move like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say rook to a3, uh, if rook to a3 then simply queen to b4 now, and after the king moves, or even knight to d2, then the queen would capture this b2 pawn, and black would have sufficient compensation uh, for the piece. So, uh, after this bishop to c2 move, uh, Yasser actually played knight captures on d4, allowing uh, Karpov to capture the rook on b3. So Karpov did bishop captures on b3, and knight captures on b3. And now Yasser has uh, a knight and a bishop for a rook, so a better position for white, definitely. Here we have rook a to c8, <clears throat> and bishop to f3, the best move in the position, uh, totally nullifying this threat of queen captures on e2, and uh, preparing to castle. Uh, Karpov plays rook to c2, if, well, white wants to castle, he will waste the move, so Karpov will grab this b2 pawn. So, Yasser does, he castles, and Karpov plays rook captures on b2. But this rook captures on b2 was actually uh, a too important of a tempo for, for Karp Karpov to waste. Uh, now we have rook to d1 by Yasser, attacking this pawn here, uh, so rook to d8, and okay, if, uh, this pawn is attacked twice, but uh, well, black is also attacking this e2 pawn, so Yasser definitely doesn't want to capture here. Uh, but this allows Yasser a very nice idea, he plays a knight to d4, now threatening knight to c6 with a fork on the king, uh, queen and the rook. 
So rook to d7 by Karpov, and now knight to c6, forking the queen and this a7 pawn. Uh, we have queen to e8, and now Yasser grabs this pawn. So Karpov was up a pawn when he grabbed this b2 pawn, but uh, well, this was in the position, and this uh, knight's, uh, knight's journey to a7 was unstoppable. So he's not really up a pawn anymore. Uh, we have rook to c7, and uh, Yasser gets a brilliant idea here. Uh, he plays a4. And uh, it seems like now Yasser blundered uh, a piece, as Karpov plays queen to a8. And now there's no way to, def to well, defend this knight. Uh, but uh, Yasser had this all planned out. He plays rook captures on d5, and now threatens all, all sorts of discoveries uh, from this bishop to the queen. So, okay, Karpov captures the knight, queen captures on a7, and here Yasser plays rook to d8 with check. Uh, we have uh, king to h8, uh, king to h7, only move, and now uh, queen to d3 again with a check and uh, where's the black king gonna go uh, he can either play g6 or maybe f5 uh, but let's see what happens g uh, if g6 is played as this is much more interesting if g6 is played then queen to d4 now with an attack on this rook on b2 and also a threatening checkmate here on h7 on h8 sorry uh, uh, rook to b1 is only moved because this is check uh, king to g2 but now uh, queen to h8 checkmate is still threatening so f6 has to be played, and here simply queen captures on f6, uh, the threat of checkmate on h8 is still there, so rook to g7, and now simply queen to f8, threatening checkmate again on h8, uh, g5, bishop to, bishop to e4 with check, rook to g6, and now queen to g8, checkmate. So although this is, a, I don't know, it's, it's a combination of maybe 6 or 7 moves, but it, it's a pretty easy uh, combination to calculate. So after queen to d3 check, uh, Karpov tried f5, but now Yasser simply captured it, queen captures on f5, uh, g6 is forced, and now queen to e6, and in this position Karpov resigned. Because if you try to stop this queen to g8 checkmate uh, anyway, for example rook to f7, you'd get bishop to e4, now threatening on g6, and now the rook has to go here, and queen to e8, and this is over. There is no move that stops uh, queen h8 checkmate. Okay, you do have uh, rook b1 check, just sacrificing the rook and prolonging checkmate for one move. Uh, but of course, the world champion Karpov doesn't <laughs> doesn't allow this. So after queen to e6, Karpov said, "Good game, Yasser, you're the man." And uh, then uh, then Karp Karpov explained uh, why he lost the game. Uh, he said that uh, well, uh, his companion Geller was actually preparing him for every game, and uh, this morning Geller went uh, you know shopping for groceries, and uh, he was out for the entire morning, and he didn't uh, prepare Karpov for the, for this game. And uh, Karpov, well, wasn't prepared, and so he lost, as as he did. So yeah, definitely good game, good game by Yasser, but but also good game Geller. So yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, this is it for this video. Uh, a lot of people have asked me to show a Yasser game, and uh, what better game to show than <laughs> than a victory over over the reigning world champion? So yeah, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here, and uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.